God bless you, God bless you. I'm so excited to be here with you, making sure that we are joining each other on this awesome time in the presence of God. I believe that you've been having an awesome time, an awesome day, and an awesome week, wherever you've been. And um, God is really doing great things in our season and in our time. We are getting into a moment where we are really seeing a paradigm shift and we are seeing God doing great things, new things. We are seeing miracles happening. And it is a sign that believers have got to rise into their place of their authority. Believers have got to rise into a place where influence has got to be seen in them. And I'm starting today, we are speaking all on a very special series that I have entitled Value. One of the things that you get to understand is a lot of people who are gifted, a lot of people who are talented, a lot of people who really you can see that they have potential, but you wonder why they get into a place where it feels as if they are stranded in life. You wonder why in some sense it feels as if life is not treating them treating them well. And one of the things that I have come to realize is that a lot of people are gifted but they are not valued. There is a difference between being gifted and having that recognition that shows you that you are valued. It might be you are in a relationship, it might be you are at work, it might be it is business. What makes you to become a priority, it is because you are valued. And there are many fundamentals and factors that influences a person's value. There are many fundamentals that influences a person to come to a place where they are valued. And one of that thing that makes a person to be valued, it is information. There are six factors that I'm going to be communicating as we go, but today I really want to touch on the aspect of information. When you read your Bible, you would realize that our Bible tells us in the book of Hosea, if you go into your Bible in the book of Hosea, chapter number 4, verse number 6, the Bible clearly tells us that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. What makes men to come to a place where they perish? It is because they do not have knowledge. They do not have information. And that fact that they do not have information, it brings men to a place where they do not know what to do. The fact that there is no information brings a person to a place where you don't know what to do. Because without information, you become irrelevant. Without information, it means you are outdated. Information is key. Information is key. No matter how much you can be gifted, you can be talented, you have to understand that the world respects and honors information. There is a difference between value and values. Value is a, the regard that is held on something. You know, the importance, the worth, the usefulness of a thing. And values on the other side, these are principles that are set standards of behavior, you know, uh, that brings men to come to a place where they can judge. So what makes people to come to a place where they value you is your understanding of principles. It is your understanding of principles that determines your behavior. And by so doing, you will see yourself now coming to a place where men translate your understanding of principles as values. And you are valued. And you are valued. You are valued. You can come to a place where you are not valued as you deserve because you do not understand the systems that are being operated in. You, 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 you might come to a place where you are not valued because your skill is not recognized. 
I always tell people when it comes to business, it is not about what you are selling. But the question must be, whatever that you want to sell or whatever that you are bringing forth to say, I want to sell this thing. Is it something that people would want to, 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 to buy? Because it's not about you as a person. It's about the people that you are selling to. So when you look at yourself, do you have the required knowledge? Do you have the required information for you to be recognized in your generation and for you to be recognized in your world? When you lack knowledge, you do things wrongly thinking you're doing them right. I remember there was a time when we were at school and you would realize that what makes a person to be given marks, it is what they know. It is what they know. Information differentiates men. You are valued according to what you know. A doctor is rewarded according to the information he studies and what he knows. A teacher is rewarded according to the information that he has that he can pass forth. An engineer is also rewarded. A lawyer is also rewarded. So all these professions, people are rewarded according to the information they have. So it is now the information that brings value, not where they are coming from. So with just this, you get to understand that it is not about your background. It's not about who gave birth to you. It is about what information do you possess. Because it is the information that you possess that will determine your behavior. It is the information that you, you, you have that will determine your perception. It is that very same information that you have that will determine your understanding of how things happen and how things should be. It is that information. So the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Because of lack of knowledge. Most of the times it comes out of ignorance because we tend to reject knowledge. We tend to reject whatever God might be speaking, whatever God might be trying to communicate to us. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. So it is what you know. If you take your Bibles to the book of Ecclesiastics chapter number 9. If you have your Bible, I want you to rush to Ecclesiastics chapter number 9. Ecclesiastics chapter number 9. Praise God. Ecclesiastics chapter number 9. You can read from verse 15. The Bible says, And there was a city, a city, and there were few men in it. And there was a great king who came and besieged the city. A great man came, and this great man besieged the city. And the Bible says, But there was in it a poor wise man in the city there was a poor wise man and by with his wisdom he rescued the city and yet no man seriously remembered him that poor man after he rescued the city no man remembered him no man remembered him what you get to understand from this aspect is when there was a crisis in this city, this man was remembered. This man was recognized. You know, when you get into that place where even people that have money, their money is not working. But what made this poor man to be remembered and be recognized is because he had something they did not have. It was information. He had something they did not have. It was information. But there was a problem. 
There are people that are gifted. There are people that have information. But the information is not valued because they lack skill. The information is not valued because they lack skill. The poor man is good at his craft, but lacks the confidence and the skill required to reward his craft. He is good at his craft, but he lacks, number one, the confidence, and number two, he lacks the skill. He lacks the skill. Information makes you to be valued. What made him to be remembered was what he knew. But it is skill and confidence because, listen to me, listen to me. You, you have to come to a place where you understand how to distribute your valuable time and energy. The Bible tells us about uh, David. It came to a time when David was with his brothers and when he went and Goliath was busy tormenting the, the children of God. And the Bible says, David arrived at that place and they looked at David and David spoke something that I love. David said, what shall be given to a man who will kill Goliath? He understood that he had the gifting. He understood, he knew he had the, the, the audacity, he had the skill. There is something he knew that they did not know. So he said, I know that I can defeat Goliath. But the problem is, I might defeat him and be forgotten. So what will be given to a man who will kill Goliath? That is the question. What will be given to a man who will kill Goliath? Sometimes it's not about the system coming to a place where it values you. Sometimes it's about you yourself coming and putting yourself in a position where you force the system to value you. Men generally reward where they see value. And sometimes we, we, we tend to belittle ourselves. Do you know there are people that are very much gifted, but because they are inferior, they have inferiority complex, they, 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 they present themselves with a low price. I want you to just look at somebody and tell them, increase your value or increase your price tag. Increase your price tag. I remember there was a time when um, I remember there was a time when people were having a debate, you know, and they brought out a scripture that says, "Freely you have received, and freely you must give." And I, I came to argue with, with, with that with that statement, and I said, I, I, "I know that the Bible says freely you have given and freely you have received." But there, has, there is a process for us to come to a position where we are talking about freely receiving and freely giving. We have to understand that there is a process. Oh, God. <laughs> there is a process, a process of development. To be what you are, you develop yourself. What makes a doctor to be? rewarded or to be paid at the price where they are paid even at the surgery it is because they look at the time in which they develop themselves to do what they do so they cannot undercharge some of you you have giftings but why are you undercharging yourself why are you undercharging with the information you possess the poor wise men had the information and this is the problem. This is the problem. This is the problem. No matter how much men value you, you can, only, you can only come to a place where you can see that they value you by the way they reward you. If they do not reward you, they don't value you. Men only value what they reward They value, they, they reward what they value. They reward what they value. So if a person tells you, no, you know, I value you. 
check, do they reward you? Look at the person and say, are you really rewarded for your worth? Are you really rewarded for your value? You know, information is key. Knowing things that other people do not know. I always tell people that anyone who does what you cannot do knows something you do not know. If you can look at anyone who is doing something that you cannot do, that person has information you do not have. And the only way you can do what they do is bring your place or coming to a place where you get to absorb or get the information they have. Other than that, you will never, you will never, you will never supersede the way they do things. Anything you cannot do is because of the information you have ignored or the information you never got. And ignorance is expensive than knowledge because anything you do not know, you pay for it. The reason why you pay for certain services is because you do not know. The reason why those services are valued is because people that, people that are to value those services do not really know or have information of such kind of information. Praise God. Praise God. Let us go to the book of 2 Kings. I want to show you the importance of information. Let's go to the book of 2 Kings. Praise God. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? And the Bible says that and the man of God sent, and the man of God sent unto the king, saying, Beware, thou pass such a place for thither the Syrians come down on you. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God had told them and warned of them and saved himself not once nor twice. Therefore, the heart of the king of the Syrians was so troubled by this thing and he called his servants and said unto them, Will you not show me which of us is of Israel? One of the servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet of Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that speaketh even in your bedroom chamber. Do you know why Elisha became one of the most strategic keys why Israel would win battles? He had capacity to attain information and knowledge that no one else could. So he was valued to an extent whereby the king of Syria risked and was so much keen to rather go and attack and besiege Elisha than going to attack the king of Israel because of the information he would get from the spirit. Such a man knew his value. If Elijah was standing at such a strategic place politically and economically where he would get information that even the learned could not get, there is no way Elijah would put himself into on a position where he is not rewarded. There is no way. So there are people that are gifted and, and you are wondering why you are going through, you are facing through, you are facing what you are facing. So you have to come to a place where you increase your value. You have to come to a place where you increase your capacity and your knowledge. That is why the Bible tells us in Romans chapter number 2 verse 12, uh, 12 verse 2, a common scripture, that do not be conformed to the things of this world, meaning do not do what everybody is doing. But be ye transformed. It is transformation that, that, that removes a person from stagnation. Do not be conformed. Do not be hindered. Do not be in a position where you are stagnant by the way people are doing things. But be thou transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So once you reach that place where 
you, you are transformed. Once you get to that position where you are transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, I want you to look at this. Praise God. Praise God. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? I want you to look at this. As you got the information for you to come to that position where you are valued, there are things that you have to understand about the information that you gather. The first thing is people will value you when you have information that is relevant. Is your information relevant? Is it relevant for, for, for what we are talking about, the crisis that we have? Because you are rewarded of the problems that you choose to solve. Is it relevant? We can't just reward you. The advice you are coming with, is it relevant? If you are not relevant, you can't elevate. It is only your relevance that determines your elevation. If you are not relevant, you can't elevate. We have to come to a place where we get to, we get you to a place where we want to see your relevance. How relevant are you? How relevant are you? <laughs> How relevant are you? If 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 maybe you 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 you, you are in, in, in politics and you have a certain strategy that can make whatever political party or a nation to come out maybe of an, a, 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 an economic crisis. You look at a man like Joseph. The Bible tells us that Joseph at a place where there was a crisis in Egypt, he came out with a strategy. He came out with a strategy. And this strategy was able to take the children of Egypt out of a hunger that was coming. He was able to attain information that was relevant. He, he deduced the king dreamt a dream. And the, the way he interpreted the information he released, it was key to the survival of a nation. The next thing we saw was that Joseph was elevated. It's a question. Sometimes you, you, you think that people are not favoring you. But whatever you are bringing, information you are bringing to the table, whatever information you are studying, is it relevant? You can read all night, study all night, but if you are studying information that is irrelevant, you can be rewarded. Because people can only reward what is relevant to them. It is the same when we can talk about being in church. You'd realize that if you are, if, if, if you are, you are preaching a message and that message is not bringing relevance to someone's situation, their focus is different than when you are talking to their situation. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Even business-wise, how relevant are you? It is relevance. We look at relevance. We have to look at relevance. Are you relevant? Are you relevant? <laughs> and the second thing that you have to look at, the information besides being relevant, it has to be accurate. It has to be accurate. Because the inaccuracy of your information is a flaw. If you attain maybe information of maybe a certain market opening, something that is about to happen in business, a certain deal that is about to open, and you do not have accurate information, there is no way you can see yourself prevailing because your information is inaccurate. It is only when you have accurate information that you can be able to execute your duties. You can be, be able to execute your assignment. You can be able to come to a place where you use your calling, your giftings effectively. But if you are at a place where 
the information you have is inaccurate. Th there is no way. Oh God, there is no way you can you 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 you, you can you, you can have that increase of value in you. You see, accuracy of information is like this. When when you look at when when you look at value, you 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 would see that I might give you a phone. But because you do not have accurate information, you might use that phone as a remote. There is a story of a son who bought the mother, he bought the mother a very expensive bed. You know beds. Bought the mother a very expensive bed, a, a, a parrot, a bed that could speak. Like 5,000 words or 500 words between that. So when he gave them, he bought the mother the gift because it was her birthday. The mother got the bed, and when the mother got the bed, the son then called the mother after the birthday was over. And he said to the mother, Mom, how was your birthday? Did you see your birthday gift? <laughs> and the mother said, Yes, I saw the birthday gift. It was very delicious. Oh, son, thank you for the gift. The gift you sent me was very delicious. The bed was bought so that it can recite words back to the mother. It was not a chicken. It was not, <laughs> it was not a meal. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But because she did not have accurate information, she did not know how to use the resources that were given to her. So a lot of people, they have resources. You, you have people around you that can help you, but you do not have accurate knowledge. Accurate knowledge of your purpose. Accurate knowledge of your gifting. Accurate knowledge of how the systems around you work. Maybe you are in engineering. Maybe you are a doctor. Maybe you are a preacher. Maybe you are, in, in, you are doing uh, accounting. Maybe, maybe you are doing business. If you do not have accurate knowledge of how systems operate, you will see yourself being flawed. Am I communicating to someone? You see yourself coming to a place where you are flawed. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the last thing that you have to God is, is there completeness in your information? Your information has got to be complete. It has to be complete. For you to come to a place where value is increased, you need complete information. Not half information. Remember the Bible says, my people perish because of lack of knowledge. I believe as you are listening to me, you might be, you, you might be gifted in a specific kind of an area. I believe as you are listening to me, God is bringing you to a place where your value is being increased. God is bringing you to a place where I'm seeing you beginning to excel in your giftings, in your callings, in your anointings. There might be places, places, aspects of your life where you feel as if you're being sabotaged. It is information that will bring you to a place where you are going to excel. Your value is going to be increased. You need to increase your price tag. Increase your price tag. If it is that you have to study, study. The Bible says study to show yourself approved. The biggest problem we have is many people do not want to study. Many people do not want to read. So you can be given a quartz and you can be given a diamond. And you, you'll be surprised. But because you have not studied the difference, you, you might throw the di a, a diamond out because you think it's a quartz. You think it's just a rock. You might be given purified gold and raw gold. And you might just throw it because you think it's just a stone. Because you don't understand value. Or you might sell the purified gold just in the price of the raw stone, you know, with, with impurities. Because you do not understand. You do not have enough information. I believe beyond any doubt that you get to a place where you gather yourself enough information. You gather yourself enough information. 
We are reaching and getting to place where God is bringing a paradigm shift over your life, over your destiny. And I decree and I declare by the power of the resurrected Christ, whoever is listening to me and wherever you are listening to me from, I speak that may the Lord come to a place where he transforms, he raises you, and he brings you to a place where you see him excelling you. May you come to that position where we are going to see you, you know, growing in your gifting, growing in your purpose, being rewarded for your word in the name and the blood of Jesus. Where you're going to be rewarded for your word in the mighty name and the blood of Jesus. God bless you. God be with you. I believe we've been blessed and I believe that you have come to a place where you have understood the aspect of value. May you come to a place where you grow. May you come to a place where understanding grows in you and information grows in you. You are going to increase in value. I speak blessings and I speak the grace of the Lord over your life. God bless you. God be with you. And may you never be treated below your value. Don't allow anyone to treat you below your value. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. God be with you. Tell somebody that God is doing a new thing. And I am part of the next move of God. In the name of Jesus. God bless you.